What on earth is wrong with this Congress, this administration? What is wrong with our government? It, it, it seems a simple enough question. Uh, you may be thinking, gee, everything's going swell. Why would Lou ask what's wrong with this government? Uh, you know, I, I frankly, folks, I, I no longer know whether or not we should take them seriously. I, I know that the consequences are serious. I know the result are, and the causal relationships are going to be very serious. But my God, these aren't serious people. They really aren't. How could anyone propose the budget that this administration has just proposed, call for $1.1 trillion in new taxes amidst a feeble, uh, delicate, fragile economic recovery? I don't get any part, <clears throat> excuse me, of what they're doing. I don't understand their tactics. Now, I'm not suggesting to you in any way that I think governing this country is easy, but it's got to be easier than what the, the Obama administration is making it seem. Uh, what is wrong with this administration? I, I, I mean, not even the liberals in this country are, are able to now rationalize the man's policies and initiatives any longer. You know, I want to hear from anyone listening to this broadcast, listening to my voice today. Please, if you voted for Barack Obama, give me a call. If you still support Barack Obama, give me a call. I want to talk to you. The nation wants to hear from you. I'm telling you, I can't rationalize a damn thing this man is doing right now. Look, we're only 13 months into this deal. And... Uh, this guy, I don't care whether you liked him, you didn't like him, voted for him, or you didn't. Uh, in November of 2008, this isn't in any part what anybody, I believe, thought we'd get. He is he is defying every expectation. Uh, he's defying reason. He's defying even his partisan identification. He has become a committed leftist who doesn't seem to understand uh what the necessities are, the requirements are of governance. Uh, he's he's a <clears throat> excuse me. He's a president who's stolen my line about deficits having consequences. Good for his advisors. He then unveils a three point eight trillion dollar budget that will lead to a record budget deficit of one point six trillion dollars. This is a man who campaigned on not raising taxes on the American middle class, and then wants to tax those health care plans and does. By the way. The only thing he exempted was organized labor. Uh, then he then he puts on a cap and trade proposal that's already passed the House. He knows that that's going to result in huge, huge taxes on the middle class held on damn near everyone. Forgive my language. I didn't mean to say that. But this guy has got my, he's got my goat. And my goat doesn't like the company it's traveling in right now. Our supreme leader repeatedly promised not to raise taxes on our middle class. I mean, how many times have I said this? There's only one way. And remember, I'm the only guy in the national media who said point blank in October of 2008, we're going to have a recovery in the second half of the year while everybody else was talking about crisis and catastrophe. He knows that the only way to derail this, this recovery, and I've said it, and I've said it, and I've said it, is to raise taxes, and here he comes. He seems absolutely committed to destroying this free enterprise economy, this free enterprise, and I will say it, this free enterprise democratic republic. Does not anyone in that administration understand the relationship between our political and our economic systems? Does not anyone in that group of top aides to this president not understand that we have to have responsible leadership now? The, the jokes are over. You cannot have your Obamacare, Mr. Obama. You cannot have cap and trade. You cannot continue to spend as if this nation were wealthy. You cannot continue to spend as if we were not $60 trillion in debt. That's right, $60 trillion. not $12 trillion. No, that's just the federal government's debt. $12 trillion on its way to $14 trillion, and you want to spend an additional $1.6 that we don't have. 
and then you want to tax $1.1 trillion. Folks, after raising taxes, one point, let me get through this, this very complicated budget that this, this administration has put forward now. This deficit of $1.6 trillion, that's on top, that's after. That's after he raises taxes $1.1 trillion. Do you see what I'm saying? This is a little bit much. One, he should be having an absolute, absolutely budget neutral uh, proposal for 2011. Instead, he's raising taxes by $1.1 trillion. Instead, he's going to have a deficit of $1.6 trillion. Look, you don't have to know math any better than a first grader to get this deal. Only his brilliant economists, his brilliant political advisors don't seem to understand first grade math. Uh, our supreme leader has uh, has taken us places I never thought we'd go. Uh, never in my wildest dreams did I think uh, we would go. Uh, I can go through the list of uh, his affronts to the intelligence and the values of this country uh, and its people. Uh, but what I'm going to do instead is we're going to be talking with you. We're going to be talking with you about a country that is uh, that's got to really come back to its center. Uh, I'm an independent. I'm a conservative. I'm a traditionalist. Uh, socially, I'm conscious. Uh, I, 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 I'm a socially conscious individual. Uh, but I got to tell you, I am a traditionalist, and I believe in the fundamental values of this country: individual liberty and freedom, individual responsibility goes with that. And equality, equality of rights, equality of opportunity, economic and educational. Those are the defining values and ideals of this nation. And my God, what we have right now is an attempt at redistribution, an attempt at national bankruptcy, an attempt to absolutely destroy the American dream for the next generation of Americans. And by God, we should not let it stand. 